DRA is backs against the wall. Small not set point. Oh, I thought it was going to the other side too. Nice interruption. He's seen it. He's seen the mix of coming. What's the mix? Oh, same side. Didn't work. He should have committed to the other side. Definitely should have. And he would have got corner position. So nice block though. Oh, oh the man, could have blocked forever. Watch the leg. Oh my gosh, he almost got another V trigger though. Oh, snap. Ah! It's, it's over. What a neutral jump from Small. He takes it over DRA. Hey guys, welcome back. It's Born Free here. We're at Defend the North for a fireside chat with the man, Smug the Beast. How are you today? How the hell are you? I'm all right, I'm all right, I'm all right. Yeah? Coming off of uh, some pretty excellent display at Ely, right? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I performed better than I expected. Uh, I didn't think I was going to do that good, to be honest. Right, so talk me through it, right? Because you qualified in losers. Yes, I, uh, I was in Pool C. And, uh, you know, you had uh, top players like Problem X, Knuckle Dude, Brolinho, Justin Wong. Oh, you had a death eyes. pool. That's, like, that's crazy. Much. It was hard. Yeah. And uh, I still managed to make it out. And uh, Problem X, was, he sent me to losers. And okay. that, so I started off in losers and I made it out. And then I start, and then for the top eight uh, qualifiers, I still st uh, started in losers. And I made my way to uh, second place. And I lost to Tokido. Yeah, I mean, you, you made it to grand finals all yeah. the way through losers, which is not easy. That's a it's, lot. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. How many games is that? That's a like, lot of games. Right? All right, so I, I played, uh, I beat uh, Fujimura. That was yeah. my first opponent, well, Kazu Buki. That's already amazing because he's probably top. Yes, he's, he's he be the arguably top the best player right now. Yeah. Arguably. Yeah, arguably, yeah. You know, like, um, yeah, he just won CEO. He won uh, so many tournaments. Uh, 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 Stun Fest, you name it, you know, so many turns. He's always top three. He's been top three for a long time. Even, for a when, long he, even time, when he was yes. Nash and he had different names. So it was surprising that um, that I won against uh, Fujimori 3 0, actually. I thought that if I won, it would have been last game, last round, last hit, or something like that. But I won convincingly, so that was uh, really good. When you went into that match, were you thinking, okay, I'm done? Did no, I've, I kind of felt confident a little bit because yeah. at first, I mean, I, w I was mostly afraid of Problem X. That was like the main person. Uh, okay. uh, well, Fujimura, when I played him at uh, Evil Japan, uh, I won pretty uh, a couple amount of times when I played him. We played at Haitani's house. He had a little casual setup. Yeah. And it was like Kami, Alex Myers, Haitani, Daigo, uh, Sherry, me, Ken Devil. There's a lot of players there, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, Yuka Don was, well, Fujimori, he was uh, beating everybody. And, you know, they had to give up their turn out of two out of a three. And every time when I played him, I made him get up. So he had, like, nice, like, long long streaks, and I ended it. So I, I, from there, I felt a little confident when I had to play in that E-League as my first opponent. Okay. So then what happened? So you got Fujimori 3-0. And then I played Problem X. Now, that match, I thought I was going to lose. I wasn't confident in that because... That was the only person I, who I really lost to at E-League. I lost to Snake Eyes and Winners as well, but that was for the round robin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I lost it. I beat his uh, Akuma, then I lost his Abigail. Uh, so right. I, I still felt a little confident with Snake Eyes, but Problem X was my main which, concern. Which character did he play against you? Was it, uh, he played Abigail. He, he, ca yeah. he counterpicked me, all right, ladies and gentlemen. Balrog versus Abigail. I call him Abigail, all right? Abigail, that's a 7th matchup. It's too hard, you know. Yeah. I work so hard and I still lose. It's just an unwinnable matchup, all right? I have to play 10 times better than the Abigail player at all times. But you did that. I did, with the greatest of ease, <laughs> okay? See, he won the first game because, once again, it's a 10-0 matchup. But then after that, I just uh, adapted and then I postulated his possibilities. That's all it took, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so can I, can I ask you, like, on that day, Okay. Mm -hmm. Were you just feeling sharp or had you done a lot of preparation or, or both? To be honest, uh, I, would, I didn't prepare too much at E-League as like I wish I should have mm -hmm. because I was barely home. That was the only uh, uh, okay. problem. But I did prepare when I was uh, at E-League, just, you know, just going to the training room, just practice a little things, you know. Um, and I usually, I play these uh, players all the time, you know, in tournaments. So it's nothing really, like, new to, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I played most of these players a lot in the past. So it's like, you know, 
I played Yukadana at Evil Japan. Played a little bit of uh, Tokido's Akuma, but not too much. Yeah. He, he was the uh, person that I played the least. I played Daigo a couple of times. I played him at a, I played him at Brooklyn Beatdown. And I forget where else I played him in. Played him somewhere else. Okay. Evil Japan, there we go. Evil Japan, friend, yeah. And then again at E-League, so. Okay. So, um, I think probably the most famous moment, famous, it will be famous. I mean, it's, it happened such a short time ago, it seems mm-hmm. weird to call it yeah, famous. Yeah. But, it, it, you know, it was a pretty big deal, right? The loser's run was amazing and everyone was really hyped. And then you went into grand finals. You reset the bracket, which is insane, against Takedo, right? And then they went to commercial break. And then all I saw on my Twitter feed was a bunch of people going, what the fuck is going on, right? Yeah. Um, I, I was told that you guys knew that that was going to happen if there was a reset of the bracket. Yeah, yeah. So um, before the match started, um, the guy that he... There's a guy behind the camera where he kind of guides us to let us know when to play our match, like when to ready up, yeah, yeah. you know. Because obviously you can't just ready up while the commentators are still talking. You can't just start the match because yeah, yeah. you're going to miss some good footage. You don't want to miss that. So the, that guy, he said that before you guys' match uh, starts... The, if you, he, he was telling me that if I uh, reset the bracket, there's going to be a commercial break. And he's saying that, uh, am I cool with that? And I said, well, I mean, I got to go with the schedule. So I said, all right, well, we got to do it, and, you know. But um, that didn't really affect my gameplay, I don't feel like. It's just I felt like I still lost, you know, at the end of the day. So that's, it is what it is, you know. Do you think it uh, affected Takedo? Uh, no, I didn't. Well, probably did, you know. It's just that he he came with a dim, different mindset during the break, you know. Yeah. So, obviously, when I came with the uh, 3-0, you know, it was something for me to think about as well, but he changed his uh, gameplay as well during the break. break sorry. So, uh, it, it, it favored him in a way, you know, but I still slowly started to adapt uh, when he was up two games. I slowly started to adapt, but I made a little wrong decision uh, when I was trying to... It was in a moment where he tried to. I thought he was going to like jab on wake up, so I tried uh, to. I tried yeah, to do a meaty throw, uh-huh. but uh, he DP'd, which is invincible. It beats throws. Yeah. So I said, ah, oh, all right, well, good games, congratulations, and I just moved on. You know. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That's a good mindset to have. To be honest, it, is, it actually is. See, a lot of people when if they lose in a situation like that with a lot of uh, pressure, being on television, you know, with a lot of. Uh, money involved for the prize yeah. with the nice trophy just sitting in your face right here you know yeah, yeah a lot of people if they get if they lose that way they'll just put their head down like this they'll they'll be like darn it man you know oh, good game you know but yeah. i was like oh you know you gotta ha- like find a fun way about it you know like find something fun about it that's how you gotta like i mean at the end of the day you're not you're not exactly playing first to 100 you're playing some short games and it could yeah. it could have gone either way you know? very intense very intense good games by the way so i, I feel like i've have i've had a lot of fun playing against tokido because it's very rare to you know playing internationals on that high of a level and at, when you play at the high of, love, high of a level you're just pretty much playing like a like you're playing smarter than you actually play than it, against other people yeah you know? With that run, like, when you walked away from it, did you feel, I mean, what were you feeling when you walked away from it? Did you feel like, what just happened, or? Uh, no, actually, uh, because each game that I won, first of all, I was just happy, you know, to that, yeah. wow, like, I can't believe I won that, okay, you know, it was good, and I just worried about my next opponent, but when I walked off the stage, I was like, wow, man, I did my thing, you know. Uh, I just started, t- I started texting everybody, like, oh, my goodness, I hope you guys <laughs> saw me tonight, man. I did my thing, you know. That's, that's the mindset I have. I don't okay. think that, uh, dang, man, I knew I should have, blo-. no, I don't think about that, you know. You mentioned a lot about, I didn't think I'd do this well on, on TV, and, I, and that struck me as mm-hmm. interesting because you kept saying on TV. Yes. And uh, it, did, did you feel more pressure because it was on television? Well, yes and no. I'm going to tell you why. See, yes, it was more pressure because, you know, you have your family tuning in. Because I, I tell all my family. I tell everybody, my cousins, you know, my, uh, my uncles, all of them. I tell them, say, hey, I'm going to be on TV such and such time. Yeah. Please watch it. You know, win or lose, you know, it's just that I'm glad that you guys got to watch me on television. So it, it is that kind of is like a... A little pressure added. It is. It is. It's hard. It's almost harder to do things in front of people that know you mm-hmm. yeah. than total strangers. You know. Oh, yeah. I mean? yeah. 
Yeah. So I feel like with, with strangers, I feel like there's less to worry about because they don't really know me personally like that. So, but I feel like with family, it's more of a big, um, it's a bigger accomplishment. I don't like I don't like having my family uh, watch me on television in my first match. I just lose. Just yeah. like a little yeah. thing that I don't really like. But uh, even if I lost, then you know I, I have to think at the end of the day they're still proud that I'm making moves. You know, yeah. it's, I'm at this position that I am. I feel blessed for it. So that's how you gotta look at it. And so your overall experience, well, we'll move on from E-League, but your overall mm-hmm. experience at E-League, it seems like you always enjoy it when you go there. Like uh, your Instagram is like full of stuff where you're just like enjoying the moment, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so you, you, th- this was the second time you've done it. Was it, yes. was it, you know, was it better this time? Or like- it, was, it was a lot better because the first E-League, that was the first time I was on television in the first place. It was live, you know, and the way... Like, my grammar wasn't the greatest because I was just saying things that I kind of was messing up. And it was things that they were just asking me questions on the spot. See, I like interviews like how you're doing it. You, you know, you asked me the question before the interview, so I won't yeah. just be put on the spot. And I'm like, oh, I don't have time to think about it. I've, I've been interviewed myself, so that's why I do it. I right. Do it. I, I, I like re- the format, like how you guys doing it. So... It gives me a little, what am I getting myself into, you know? So that's yeah. why with the E-League, uh, and again, not to like um, say anything bad about them. It's just that I w- so the, I, it was just the interview questions I was uh, asked. I just wasn't prepared for it at the moment. So I didn't like, when I look back at it, I didn't like the way I answered some questions, you know? I think, so, I, I think... Uh, uh, Personal thing, but it's... Yeah, but it's also the difference between live and recorded. So yeah. so live is sort of, we're going to talk about what just happened five seconds ago. Right. Whereas you and I are talking about stuff that yeah, yeah. just happened a while ago. Right. So, But I always think the best answers come from, if anyone out there you know wants to do interviews, mm-hmm. uh, I always think the best answers come from people who've had a little bit of time to think about yeah. what they're going to say. Because mm-hmm. I've been interviewed before and I, I'm like, what, what? You know, like, I'll just give you a dumb answer because... I haven't had time to think. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's talk about Evo because that's what's coming up next, right? And yes. It's you, different now. It's in August. Yeah. It's in August. Usually it's in July. Yeah. Why do they push it back to August? You notice that about a lot of the tournaments. Oh, trust me. I, I noticed because I used to go to Evo and they always used to put it a week after or a week before San Diego Comic Con. So mm-hmm. I always used to go to both. Mm-hmm. So now I was like, well, no. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, go on with the, uh, uh, I said Evo. Evo, sorry about that. But so, oh yeah, uh, preparation for Evo. So coming off of E-League, do you feel, you know, like a little bit more pumped, a little bit more like, hey, you know what, I might have a chance at Evo, or do you not put that pressure on yourself? Like, how do you prepare? You mean, you've been doing this for years now, but like, how did your, did your preparation change going into Evo? Uh, my per, no, it didn't change at all. It's the same, I feel like, cause you know, it's the same players that I'm going to be playing against, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's the same preparation. Obviously, I have to uh, train, you know, focus on, like, who's in my bracket so you can yeah. find out um, what, what yeah, am I going to do. Yeah, see who you're likely yeah, to play. Yeah, see So say if I had to play Daigo, right? Mm. He plays Gao. So I said, okay, well, let me practice the matchup so I could be prepared. I don't want to go into my pools at Evo uh, where I'm not prepared and then I lose because I didn't train. You know, it's completely my fault. So that is what I want to ask you, right? Because yes. I feel like you, uh, and, you know, Tell me if I'm wrong, right? You're wrong. <laughs> I'm playing with you. I look, I look, I know, I know. But I look at, I've, you know, I've watched you like at NLBC back in the day. Mm-hmm. And we'll talk about that in a bit as well. Like, okay. but I always saw you as a hard worker, not necessarily like now, some. Say that again. I'm a, I'm a what worker? A hard worker. I'm not an easy worker. You said I'm a, I'm a, a what worker? Well, not versus easy worker, versus naturally talented. Like, I'm, now I'm a naturally talented. Well, I don't know. You tell me. Like, when you first picked up, when you first played a fight get, fighting game, mm-hmm. were you naturally talented or did you work your way? Well, according to what you're saying, you know, it's, now I have to think about it, I probably am a little naturally talented, you know? It's, I am a hard worker according to what you were saying. You know? <laughs> But uh, no, no, I was playing games since I was young because I grew up in a household with um, my brother and my two cousins. I live in a castle, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Not trying to say I'm rich or anything like that. Middle class, that's it. That's the best I can do. There's a lot but, of castles in New York. Say it again? There's a lot of castles in New York. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, uh, that, I just grew up with, like, uh, no, no, my cousins around and stuff. you yeah, can yeah. compete with. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right, right. So 
you know, the first game I played was Tekken, you know, so obviously. Oh, I really? Been, yeah, yeah. The, fir- the very first Tekken. Really? Yeah. My, I'm like the youngest in the house, so that's okay. why I, I grew up playing all the fighting games in the world. I didn't just pick up. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay, that explains a, a lot because when you, I think when you get to play a lot of different fighting games, mm-hmm. you, you, it opens up your, or as you say, you can postulate the possibilities, postulate right? Postulate the so possibilities. There's more, possibi- there's more yes. possibilities, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so Tekken was the first game you played. When you first played it, were you garbage or were you like pretty oh, I was, good? I was garbage. You were garbage. Yeah, of course. All right, so let's go. Let's do that. Let's go back in time, right? Let's, let's Wait, do that again. I like. That. Let's let's go back in time. Right, ladies. That's, that's my new thing. I'm gonna start doing it. Now it's time. Now it's time to go back in time. Okay. Uh, so I remember you playing Dudley, right? Okay. Which, first of all, was wow, like, you remember that? Tag. That feels good doing that. Right. All right. Uh-huh. First of all, I mean, first of all, who picks Dudley, right, right. and says I'm gonna make this work? Uh, and also, I remember you being at NLBC week after week after week, yeah. and I seem to remember it being like you were getting beaten by by uh, uh, Sanford Kelly week after week after week after week, and then one day you beat him, finally, right? Mm-hmm. So that to me is a that's that that is where you have to put your ego aside, mm-hmm. right? You have to grind like hell, yes, and you have to rewatch your matches, and you have to work, and you have to work, and you work, and you have to believe. You have to absolutely you do have believe. To believe. Because when you're getting beaten that, you know, just once or twice, you think, I, this guy's unbeatable, right? You must have felt that at some point. Mm-hmm. And then there must have been a point where you felt like, uh-uh, n- n- I think I can beat him. And then there was a point where then you just started beating him every week, mm-hmm. I think, if my memory's correct. Well, when I started, um, when I started going to the next level, that was back like June 2012, a long time ago. You know, uh, at that time, I played Sanford. I lost the very first time I play, played Sanford because, you know, I, that's my first offline tournament. I'm nervous. But then when I played him, uh, I was like, oh, I, I felt like, I was like, all right, I, could, I felt like I could beat him. That's how I felt. I felt oh, like, okay. I felt confident, you know. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of other people like Arturo, Rico, Chris G, I could not beat those dudes. It was just something, I don't know, I could, oh, Sanford was the only one I felt like I had a chance. To. And then as time went by, the more I went to uh, next level, you know, I started getting better and better because at my house, I had a box TV, you know. You know those, like, those Panasonic 1993 TV, box TV? Oh, CRTV. With the little antenna? Yeah, like a CRTV. You know, yeah, you got to yeah. bang the, the side yeah, of the TV yeah, yeah. just to get signal or whatever. You did know. you feel the lag? No, oh, when? when? Oh, did it have lag? Did it, did it have No, it was, it was it, fine. It was pretty good? Yeah, okay. it was just the, the quality. It was better on a monitor, yeah. like the Asus or the BenQ. Yeah. So when I got my own monitor, when I joined Pi, uh, that's when I really... Uh, improved because footsies is very important yes. in uh, Street Fighter. So that's when I learned footsies, pretty much. When I got that monitor, I could see every detail of how the, where the character's spacing, you know, where you are located, you know, so it's really important to have I was going to say, like, that's one of the things that you're really, really good at is footsies, right? Um, particularly watching uh, Street Fighter 4, I, I, it was more evident because it was. I feel like it was more of a footsies game, yeah. right? Um, when did you start you know, taking a sort of a, I guess, a more professional approach. And did you, did you, do you, I mean, this is the bit that people are really interested in, right? Yeah. Like, and they always ask me to dig deep on this one, but like, did you, did you give yourself a, 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 shed, a schedule, uh, a, you know, of how to learn? Like, I don't know. But like, how did you go about going from just like an average player to a great player and learning foot season and all that stuff? Well, I think I took the game serious when I joined Pi. Okay. Because that's our uh, city of brass and Lee Chung. They uh, I first met Lee Chung. Where did I meet him? I met. I think I met him like. No, I met. Yeah, I met Lee Chung offline. We, we, he was a cool dude, you know. And then uh, we uh, exchanged contacts, you know. And um, ever since then, I was like, oh, this is a cool dude. Then I played a uh, city online, city of brass online. You know, we chopped it up, and the next thing you know, he knew Lee Chung. They were on the same team. I was like, where really? Wow. Ever since then, you know, I was really cool with those guys. You know, they're like family to me. So the, the city just said, hey, man, we would like you to join Team Pi or whatever. We want to uh, take it to another level. We want to, like, start traveling everywhere, you know, go to majors. I never went to a major. I just went to uh, my weeklies, Next Level Battle Circuit. Yeah. So ever since then, I, my first major offline was uh, NEC 2013. I went. Yeah. And... Ever since then, I was like, you know what? I like majors. It makes me... Because if you make it out of pools, it's pretty much you winning your local. If you make it out of pools. Yeah. So when you make it out of pools, you're like top 32. Yeah. Then when you make top 32, 
now you have to play against like the top players of in America or in yeah. the world, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a different mindset playing the majors. But but going back to training, right? So mm -hmm. like, what do you? I mean, what were you doing when you decided to get better? Did you go right? I'm gonna have a notebook. I'm gonna spend an hour doing footsies against the computer, like. Yes. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, so there was a guy named Kaiser Master. Yeah. Now, that's another backstory to this. I don't know how much time you guys have. You know, I don't want to... I mean, to it's, it's more your time because you have to go... Oh, all right, you have to go say to no top, more. Well, you okay. have to go to top 32 at 8 o'clock. So yeah, yeah. let me just check the time. It's, it's, <laughs> oh, we're good, we're good. Yeah. So um, it was around that time when uh, I kind of was like in a, a space where I just didn't feel confident with my Dudley because... I, I was I came from online, you know, and I was starting to play offline a little bit, but I felt like I was getting better, but I didn't feel as confident because I was the online number one ranked Dudley in the world. Yeah, like ten times. Yeah, Doctor Smuggles and all yeah, that. Yeah, PhD. Yeah. Of course. Like that. Of course. Which one yes. was your favorite name? Oh, my favorite name. Hmm. Because I saw like a million of them. Grandma Smug. What was it? Grandma Smug. Grandma Smug. My right. grandmother played. You know she. Yeah, she, yeah, she was ridiculous. Of course, she taught you everything you know. Uh -huh. But um, sorry, Karen. So talking about training. Yeah. So um, I was, I trained. This is a weird process, but I felt like I didn't have any setups. I felt like I didn't have like good footsies. So I was with Kaizen Master. He helped me train. I didn't know frame data at the time either, or hip boxes or footsies. So he helped me train and have a better understanding of the game and ever since I learned about frame data and footsies and like fundamentals and all of that stuff, I approached this game completely different. I looked at this game completely different after that. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this is a completely different game ever since, you no, know? I realized. Yeah. What is so, that? We got Kami. We got the guest Kami. <laughs> oh. Big right. fan, big fan. I'm a big no. fan too. No. Big fan, big fan. No. Uh all right. Well so, that was unexpected, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, that was that was uh it's all right, it's all right. That was good. I think he was trying to get into you, which we will do later anyway, which is all good. <laughs> yeah, um, but... I, <laughs> but you got into the technical side of it, so you're a scientist. Oh, okay, all right. Well, I'll take that as a compliment, yes. You know, I like breaking down yeah. things, you know, I like breaking atoms, okay? I know <laughs> nothing about that, all right. Oh, what about nowadays? Like, do you, do, you, do you spend a... Do you have a schedule for each day? Like, do you... Or is it more just whatever you decide when you wake up? Well, well, recently, I'm barely home. Okay. So, because cause I'm, I'm a very busy person. Yeah. But at the time when I was really grinding to get... Uh, become, like, a professional player, yeah. I could tell you everything that I've done. Um, I definitely played this game a lot online because I felt like if I don't travel as much... I try to get as much matchup knowledge and experience as possible online, you know. Yeah. Messaged a lot of people, played rank, played endless battle, like casuals. Yeah. And uh, that was my training, really. And talking to Kaiser Master, we, uh, after each match, win or lose, we just go into the replay channel and, uh, and break down what, what I was supposed to do here, what am I not supposed to do. Oh, Even okay. training room. A lot of people don't know how to use training room at all. So, for example, say if you lose to a person... They use, the same, they, they use this one annoying thing that you just don't know what to do. You don't know how to deal with it. So, yeah. for example, say somebody just jumping at you. And it's so annoying. You're like, this guy keep jumping on me. Oh, my goodness gracious, you know? Then you go to your training room and try to find out how to... Uh, and share it like, yeah, try effectively, to, yeah. Yeah. So there's some situations where, say, if you don't have a good anti-air to stop it, sometimes as soon as you jump, you have to jump back. Like, you have to air to yes, air. Yes, yes. Meaning yeah. an air to air is when somebody jumps... You jump in the air, and yeah. then you, like, press a button to, like, stop him from jumping at you. You have to, sometimes that's the answer. Yeah. There's always an answer to, to everything in the game. Yeah. Maybe it's not, like, the most, you can't do the most damage or get the most out of it, but at least it's something. You know, you can't just let somebody bully you all day with that one thing. Yeah, Kaiser Master is interesting, because I remember at one time, I had done a video about... Uh, practicing defense or something. I can't even remember what it was. But he, he had suggested actually going into games and just purely using the game just for practicing defense. Like yeah. not, not win or lose or anything like that. Yep. Which is, a lot of people get salty because they, they want to win everything, right? Whereas a lot of the smart players I've known just use like online matches sometimes just to learn something. Exactly. So they don't care if they lose. They, you know, like it, one, of, one, of, one of the things he had advised, I think, when I was talking to him was like, imagine going into a game where you're just defending the whole match. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to annoy the hell yeah. out of the other player, but oh, yeah, like, yeah. 
But like, it's kind of interesting. And exactly. I, uh, an interesting he gives me idea. all kinds of different theories of how to approach the game. I'm like, wow, like something, things you will never think about. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, say if like you want to learn a matchup, you play that character. Like, for example, like, say if I'm playing Ryu and the other person's playing Chun-Li. Yeah. I will play Chun-Li and you play Ryu. Then you find out some things that you would never expect. Yeah. Or they will teach you some things like, wow. I gotta start using this button more. I yeah. didn't realize how good it was. Me dealing with the normal myself. Yeah, switching, you gotta deal with that. You know, switching roles. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. gotta look at it that way. Then you can see what. Then you get a sense and of it, like what yeah. they're all about. What are they yeah, trying to so do right now? Safe as like uh, Chen Li's stand heavy punch is really good range. Yeah. And then when you deal with it, it's like, wow, this button is actually really good. I have to start using it. Then you start bullying people with it, and it helps your gameplay that way. That little one concept. That one little concept. Yeah, yeah. When they figure out. Yeah. Now, Dudley, what on earth possessed you to like pick Dudley? Like what like why would you do that? Like I don't get it. Like what like probably because I have a loser's mindset compared to you. You're a winner. I, I'm not doing what you do. But like why would you especially since you hadn't already established yourself, right? Why why Dudley? I played Dudley for because obviously he's a cool looking character, you know, he has a lot of cool things, but you had just, no one to em emulate, right? Well, really? I'm gonna get to that. I'm gonna get to that. All but right, okay. I liked him because I loved his combos, just a swag, swaggy character. But you know how like all the the players that enter like in the Street Fighter tournament, they they all want to do it for like to avenge somebody or revenge or something like that, you know. But Dudley, he entered Street Fighter to get his Bentley back. That's ridiculous. <laughs> he don't care about anybody. He just want to get his car back. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he beats up all these people, you know, takes them to Duff City just to get his car back. I'm like, wow. Well, like, I was like, you cannot not like a character for, you know, come on. All about his car. So I respect him for that. It is actually amazing how some sort of emotional attachment to a character actually makes somebody invest their time in that character. You know, I would never would have... For somebody who's trying to establish themselves, you know, as a play, as a good player, to me it's like to me it's alien to like just go pick a character that nobody else is really using. Mm -hmm. And then you put Dudley on the map. And actually, something I I wanted to bring up and I totally forgot to write down is you, okay. you went to Japan. Yes, uh, I did. You, they invited you to. They don't do it anymore. Um, what was it called? It was I'll the, tell you all the ones I've been invited the round to. It was the, it, yeah. So the, the first one was the round robin called Topanga. Topanga, that's yes, right. Yes, yeah. that was in 2015, April-ish, I think. Yeah, I think it was April. And um, then the next one I was invited to was a 5v5 well, uh, in Street Fighter V. It was for, uh, it was uh, Team USA versus Team Japan. Yeah. And then for Evil Japan, I was also invited to, so. Okay. Uh, but they definitely... You know, I think the fact that you played Dudley and you play and you were, you know, winning, you were winning. Um, that I remember when they invited you to Panga, and I remember thinking they are scared. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, it's a funny background story about that. I was in a uh, college at the time for the remedials. I was doing remedial class or yeah. whatever, right? And I'll be honest, you know, I'm not the greatest person in school. You know, I'm, I'm probably not the genius you guys think I am. But I wasn't doing well at the beginning. My grades was looking like I was getting a lot of C's and stuff. It just yeah, yeah, yeah. Really wasn't, you know, it wasn't my thing really. But it was, I was struggling, you know. But uh, I was, there was a thing I was supposed to prepare for finals, right? But I was also invited to Topanga. So the, the, the biggest decision I pretty much almost had to make was they were inviting me to go to Topanga, but if I went, I would not have a chance to study because too many distractions. It wasn't going to happen, you know? Yeah. So if I get invited to Topanga, I won't have time to study, then I'll fail my finals. That was my thing, right? So I was asking so many people, I said, what should I do? Like, should I go here or not go? And they said, dude, if I were you, that's like a once a lifetime opportunity. Yeah, yeah. You're going to, dude, this is Japan. How many people say they can go to, they yeah, went to Japan? I never mean, I'd love to go. Right, exactly. Yeah. So I thought about it and I said, you know what, worst case scenario, what if I do not go to Japan and I still fail the test? So it's like, wow, I could have just went to Japan in a uh, case. Ah, so you know what happened? Okay. I went to Topanga, I had a really amazing time in my life there, yeah. went to Japan for the first yeah. time, enjoyed the food, enjoyed the tournament, see yeah. how everything lasted. I did pretty well at Topanga, came back and I got an A on my final. So I was like, oh, 
Okay, I felt the power within, okay? No, I, I actually, it's funny you say that because there is something to be said about mindset, mood, and all that sort of stuff. Like, because I think when you, uh, you know, I'm not a psychologist, but like, I felt this myself. When you go through moments of, of feeling appreciated, of feeling important, of feeling like you're doing something with your life, mm -hmm. I think that sometimes elevates like how your brain works. Like I genuinely believe that. I'm sure there's probably some science behind it as well, but you went out and you did something amazing, you experienced new things, yeah. and you came back fresh. Yeah, and, and I came back fresh, and I didn't even, and again, I didn't have time to prepare for the finals, and I've managed to do really well. I was like the most improved in a whole like, class for that. Well, talking about that, because like, I think that basically, and I've been meaning to do a video on this for about 100 years, but like, I think that when you have a passion, like Street Fighter or something like that, you start to organize because you want to win, right? So you right. start to organize yourself. And I, I think that passion overlaps into other things. So do you, do you feel like there are, the, it has affected the way that you approach other things in your life? Because because of the training and you know like, not really to be honest. No, I, I mean I don't. Do you I feel like, like wait, when you because you're taking a break from school right now, right? Yeah. If you went back to school, do you feel like there are things that you learned, you know, because you because because I sometimes feel like Street Fighter, you know, when you're taking it seriously and you're training, is a bit like training for an exam, like. Well, yeah, discipline in that concept, yes. Like, discipline's a big deal. Yeah, because obviously, like. You can train, right? But then you gotta discipline yourself to train for a matchup. Like this is my concept. When I play sets, I play long sets. So How you're long? not say it again? How long? So now I'll get to that. So now there's people that just play nonstop. They don't even count the score or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They just keep playing for hours. But what I do is is I do like sets where I play a first to five games or whatever, right? You win the first to five, then you then you count that as one point. So you need three points to win the whole oh, set. Ah, okay. Right. But now each set, you, uh, you stop playing, then you guys talk about the matchup in that set. So for example, in Street Fighter V, there's two V-triggers, right? So if I'm playing against you, I'm playing Ryu, mm. you're playing uh, Ken. So the first set, I will that's try V-trigger. That's never going to happen. I'm, I'm never no, going to play. No, let's I, just I, say, I, this is an example. I, I hate Ken. I'm never going to play Ken. Just All right. Well, Akuma. Let's go okay, Akuma. Okay, okay, Akuma. That's better, right? right? We, just, I play Ryu, you play Akuma. I tried V Trigger too. I just want to try something different in the set. Now, I want to try to win this set. And then if I lose, that's fine. I'll talk about it. I'll be like, okay, I lost because I feel like I'm limited to such and such. Like I can do more. I feel like I can do more in V Trigger 1 than I can in V Trigger 2. So something like that, it breaks down matchups that way, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's so, why it's good so, to talk about it. And so you, uh, these are the people that you sort of, your buddies that you call up and you yeah. play and then you talk in between yep. and you say, you could do this better, I could do this better. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. A lot of people don't do that. A lot of people would just want to play just to beat you. Yeah. They don't want to learn. They just want to win. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you, when you have a mentality like that, it would get you just as far. Like, like you won't, you would be the person to not like long sets. You know what I mean? You're probably plateau. Yeah, just, there's, a, there's a few people I think it works for. I have but, fun, but, actually, but, when but I play not sets. everybody. Yeah, like a lot of people... I, I understand if you take the game really seriously. I take it seriously, too, but I, I have fun with it, too. I feel like you play better when you try to have fun with it, too. Yeah. You know? I, I think you have to know when you're trying to win. It's like if you work at McDonald's, right? Yeah. You're flipping burgers, right? Yeah. But if you're just doing it just to do your job, you know, and, and try to take it too seriously... You're not gonna add the love in the burger, you know. See, yeah, when you put true. a smile on your face, you know. <laughs> you making the burger. Is that ah, a smile? You know, uh, is that ah, smile? you know. That looks like that. Add the little ketchup. Ah, add the little pickles. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that that's gonna be the most slamming hamburger you will have in your life. See, okay? I think you have a good outlook to life. I, I exactly. like it. I like you know? it a lot. Now, I'm gonna bring you slap back down to earth because I heard a ten-year-old beat you in Fortnite just now. Oh yes, that <laughs> dude is actually good. His name was um. Little Bean, okay? I call him Little Bean the God, all right? This dude is ridiculous, all right? He was born to play that game. He blinked and he won. He beat me like that. So like, He postulated I, my possibilities. <laughs> did, you feel, did you feel him postulating? Uh, yes, I felt it. He did all of this and everything. He just did that. I was like, oh, I lost. When as soon as he did that, I was like, I'm done. So just to explain very quickly, if people who don't play Fortnite, how, do, how does it work and why did you lose? 
Okay, so the tur- the way the format works for this tournament is it's a 1v1 game, right? But you guys join each other's session, so you guys are on the same team mm. called duos. And then on that team, whoever gets the most kills pretty much wins. Mm-hmm. So what happened was uh, we both, I died first before we both got killed. So mm-hmm. he automatically got a point because I died first. And then um, the next game, I got more kills than him. I got uh, five, I believe. But then he had one or two, but he died. So I won another point. So now it's 1-1. One, one. Yeah. Then the last game, we ended up going to the same uh, spot. So try to play it safe, play the patient. Then we ran into this one team, um, and I died first. So he uh, took the W. You were done. Yeah. Ten so I was like, years old. Yeah, man. I, I feel like the younger... People like this generation, man. They just are just really good. Grow up you know? in video games. Yeah. Like, see, I'm I'm in my seventies. Okay, I'm, I'm I'm a little. He's a young. You're I'm a young little. Looking. Grandma Grandma Smug is a young looking. Person. Oh yeah, she she taught me how to play Dudley, so I respect her for that. Exactly. Hi, Grandma. Uh, so let me ask you something. We're gonna we're gonna change pace a little bit. Okay. Um. I want to ask you for your, this is the question I've been asking everybody, your FGC unpopular opinion. Unpopular opinion. Hmm. My unpopular opinion is I feel like esports is in a really good position. You know, I feel like esports is doing a thing right now and I'm glad where it's going right now. So uh, also, Cammy's broken. I just want to add that in there. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's a pop- that, that was out of nowhere. I just a, added that in. That's there. a popular opinion. So we got the unpopular and the popular. So esports. Uh, what do you think um, when you look at esports? I mean, you've participated in nearly. It's all kind of becoming esports in a way because they're all sponsors and stuff, right? But is there anything that you feel is done really well? And is there anything that you feel like? Oh, I feel like they could do better in this area. Uh, well, for the esports, like yeah, in general, like as we progress to more, profe- uh, I guess, a more professional place. Do you, and what was the question? You think is is, is there is what what things do you think are being done really well? Oh, what particular elements? And then, I, are there any elements where you go? I don't know if this is right for the FTC, or I think they should change this. Or no, I actually like where it's going because now it's getting more professional. It's becoming a sport. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's getting a lot more recognition now, like MLG. So I like where it's going. I like where it's heading to, like, the television lane. Yeah. You know, where now I can do what I love and be on television for it and have my family support and watch me. Because I never thought to the day that, you know, I just played this, just, I played the games just like a hobby, you know, just and streaming he- just to watch people. I mean, have people watch me just, you know, just clown around online. But now it's like people can watch me play the game I love on television and, yeah, yeah. you know, and win tournaments. And you're still, you're still like... And I'm still the same, you you're know? You're still the same. I was just thinking that, actually. Like, your your character fits very well with it because mm-hmm. it's, you know... Yeah, I don't have to be on TV or stand up like this. Yes, change my voice and everything. Yeah, like, no. yeah, you know, uh, I feel like statistically, you know, add this extra <laughs> vocabulary words that you don't know what it means. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. You know, but no, I like how you could be yourself. You know, just keep it cool. You know, that's what I like about where the esports is going. You could be yourself and it's just... You, you finally get something out of it when you uh, for the game you love yeah. or just what you do. So, so I like how, it's going. Uh, I'm actually going to go a step back. How much Fortnite do you play on your free time? Uh, I actually play a lot of Fortnite. I'll be yeah, honest. I was thinking that. You I, boys, I like the game. It's fun. It's fun, you know. So, because there's some times where you just don't want to play the same game yeah. Street Fighter. You know, you just yeah. want to try different games, you yeah. know. I, I like the game a lot, so that's why I just wanted to enter it, you know? So let me ask you this, right? Because you're a professional player, right? Yes. You've already proved to yourself that you can do this on a professional level. Fortnite announced, you know, $100 million worth of prizes. When they announced that, did you think to yourself, did you postulate the possibilities of, uh, you know, maybe entering, a, becoming a professional Fortnite player? This is player? all I did. When I saw it, I was like, hmm. <laughs> That's all I did. That was how, really my, my and response. And how long did you do that for? I did it for like 20 minutes straight. Okay. Has it ever crossed your mind? What? The idea of like maybe taking the same mindset and, and putting it towards Fortnite? Uh, well, I kind of did, yeah. But mostly like I, did, I trained more for Street Fighter, obviously. It's just that I'm starting to get into Fortnite. So not yet I'm, I'm training as hard as uh, 
for Street Fighter. So we can at least say that you, when you play Fortnite, you are not just playing it for fun. You're sort of like trying to get good. Like yeah, it, I'm trying to get good. But usually, like I originally started out playing Fortnite just with friends because they got me into it. You know, I, yeah. I'm in a party with, on a PlayStation network all the time and you know they invited me to the party nice. so i'm always like my homeboys you know we just talk all the time yeah. we play fortnite just chilling yeah so that's how it really was but then eventually the game was so fun i said and i look at other top players and they're yeah. just so good they're so inspiring you know so i'm like wow i wish i could do that you know i, I want to get that good so that's why i'm starting to like is there anyone you watch in particular on fortnite yes uh i watch ninja and i watch tfue and nick a 30. okay take one a couple of times you know? okay and are they all different but styles? I don't watch it. Different but like, styles, yeah. But my favorite, his name is Tfue. I, I like him a lot. Oh, okay. What, what is it about him that you like? What I like about him is, is just the, how his performance of like how good his aim is. You know, uh, like I feel like his aim is on steroids. Like, uh, it's really? like sometimes like, dad, you, you're just too good, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's always doing something impressive. I learn every, every time I watch him, he's always doing something new that I learn. I'm like, oh, I didn't know you could do this. So... That's what okay. I like about him. Are you looking out for him? Are you looking out for him? That's the guy right there. That's the guy. That's the guy. That's the guy. That... Oh, bring him in. Let's bring Dude, him you got to bring him in the interview. We got a little B here. We got a little Dude. B. Did you win Fortnite? This guy right here? Yes, you did? Come, yes, here. Yes, come, come, come here. Come here. Come here. Just oh come sit on, sit on that just for a second. This guy is the future, ladies and gentlemen. This guy is the future. <laughs> show, him, show him the plaque. Oh, my goodness. This is actually my very first tournament. Your, fir your first tournament? This is goals right you have here. To, you have to think, because I've got the mic here, so we'll have to share the mic a little bit. Okay. So, this is your first tournament? Yes, yes it is. Where, and where are you from? I'm at, I was born and raised in New York for five years, but then I moved to Florida. Are you in Florida right now? Yes, I am. Oh, yeah, okay. So you came here just to, to wreck everybody at Fortnite? Yes, to visit for the summer and spend time with my family. And was it easy wrecking him? Mm. He, he put up a pretty good fight. He put up a bit. You're a very polite person for a, for a ten year old. You're very polite. I do. I do not believe he would even say that now. He, he would say he would have beaten you with the greatest of ease. Did you beat me with the greatest of ease? Say yes. it to the camera. Yes, I did. <laughs> this guy has a future, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. So Lil B, it is right. Yes. All right, guys, look out for Lil B. Lil B, congratulations. Thank you. And go and I don't know what ten year olds do to celebrate. Ice cream maybe? No. No. No celebration? No, I do have a celebration. We me and my um father, we'll go to Chipotle and eat. Chipotle. Chipotle. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh now we're talking. What do you get from Chipotle? Right, yeah, do you get the good. do you get the bowl or you get the burrito? I got a, I got a bowl. <laughs> All right. Oh, All, right. All right. Well listen. Very proud I'm I'm proud of you. Uh, I've just met you, but I'm proud of you. So congratulations and uh do you stream or is... Uh, no, this is my very first tournament. I don't really, I don't stream at all. Okay. If Maybe. you stream, I will watch you. Yeah, I think... For, you, for sure. Uh, yeah, Get I, my popcorn, okay? I think you need to, to think about streaming because you may have a good career ahead of yourself. I might get into it. You might get into it. You might get into it. You might get into it. Trust me. If you right. start streaming, man, forget about it. Trust me. As ex From experience, I stream too. Trust me. Yes. Yeah, this guy's actually a top Street Fighter player. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. But but he's trash at Fortnite, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It you doesn't know. really matter. You're the champ right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> all right. So listen, I don't mean to brag, but you so know listen, what I mean. I'm just. I'm gonna bit. let my plaque do the talking, okay? Uh, we're gonna let you go. I think your father's up there. I think you should go and enjoy your Chipotle. Congratulations again. Thank you. And I look forward to seeing you in the future. I'll be like the guy who. I'll be like I did the first ever interview. Is it the first ever interview? Uh, yes. With the, I'm actually ten. No, I know you're 10. I just wasn't sure. I can't tell anymore these days. Like, I just can't tell. <laughs> it's all right, it's all right. So I'll be able to say, when this guy's the future, when you're making your millions, don't forget who interviewed you first. Hopefully I'll be better than Ninja. Oh, uh, all, all right. right. Uh, well, there you go. Well, all then. There's the call out. There's the call out. All right, take it easy. And you go Me eat too. You go eat and celebrate. All right. Enjoy that Chipotle. I will. All right. That guy has a future ahead of him, man. That was so much fun. Yeah, of course. I'm glad we got to meet. Uh, yeah, got to meet the the king of the future of, of probably all, all video games. Of course. All right. So, um, what I want to ask you is, even though you're playing Fortnite at the moment, 
why did you choose? What is it about fighting games that you love over other games? Why do you spend so much time in fighting games? I don't know. The, my love for fighting games, I just like because I grew up with uh, loving martial arts movies. That was always my thing. Ah. So I always did like the fighting concept of different fighting styles. You know, so yeah. Street Fighter and Tekken, those two games, I just like fighting, like watching the fight scenes, I, and I want to like actually control it, like me actually fighting the opponent. So that's what ah, I like. Okay. So. Uh, do you have a martial arts movie that you watch a lot? One, do you have a favorite? Ooh, that's a hard one, but I'll tell you my favorite is Jackie Chan, 100%. Oh, yeah? Jackie why, Chan. why Jackie Chan? Because, he... because, see, with Bruce Lee, he just beats the opponent, boom, he's overpowered, he's good. We already know. He's just going to beat the opponent. But Jackie Chan, he makes a clutch. That's why I like him. Because he plays, he fights against a, a guy and like there's three guys, but he makes it look real hard. He gets beat up in the beginning. He has to like outplay the person, you know, just. And it's like he makes it not look easy, pretty much, but still uh, manages to make it out and still beats the opponent. And it's just like his personality, he's goofy as yeah. well. So he makes it entertaining, he makes it funny, you know. So that's why I like about Jackie Chan. And he does all his own stunts. He does, stunts, yes. Yeah, and he does his own stunts. He has crazy stunts. Uh, so does Bruce Lee, all right? Do you you know, like he's drunk, too fast. For do you like Drunken Master? Of course. One and two. It's ridiculous. So like you, just, you, just, two, you just affirm for what me you that... Know, what you, you know about the, Drunken Master? Yeah, I know, right? What you, you know about You just that? affirm for me that I know what I'm talking about. What you know about Drunken Master? I love Drunken Master. Drunken Master is the best. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's switch gears a little bit and talk about the future, right? So, you know, at some point, Capcom's probably going to make another fighting game. Mm -hmm. uh, they kind of screwed up with Marvel. Um, I, I mean, they screwed up with with the launch of Street Fighter, and I'm hoping that they do not screw up in the future. Uh, and I imagine, given that they're so entrenched in the esports and all that sort of stuff, that they haven't pulled out of fighting games, which they could do if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. So, thinking ahead, imagining there's a Street Fighter Six, and you you know you've definitely played Street Fighter Four, you've played a lot of different fighting games in your time. Mm -hmm. What would you like to see? come back or, or appear in a Street Fighter 6? Uh, I would probably, for Street Fighter 6, back in Street Fighter Alpha 3, they had like the V-isms, like the V-ism, the, yeah. the, the, the X-ism, yeah. and A-ism, I believe. If they had those back, that would be cool. I want to see something different, you know? Yeah. Uh, so people would have more possibilities. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like just different mechanics, like just new mechanics, something cool to... Like universal me mechanics? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's mostly it, to be honest. That's my answer. I'd what about uh, footsies? Because... I think each fighting game will always have footsies, no matter what. Yeah? Yeah. Because uh, do you feel... I mean, this is me as somebody who's not as skilled as you asking the question. But Street Fighter 4, there seems to be a lot more talk about footsies in Street Fighter 4 than, for instance, in Street Fighter 5. Like, how much do you, do, do you, as a professional, do you feel like there's a lot of footsies in Street Fighter Five, or it's just different, or? It's just like a different approach with footsies in Five than it is in Four. With Street Fighter Four, uh, it's just a different concept. Like, Street Fighter Four, it was like, you do, you, you do, you play footsies, and then when you knock them down, then it's like the set play happens, right? Mm -hmm. But Street Fighter Five, Footsies happen until you activate V-Trigger. Ah. It's a little different mindset. You, it's still, you can still play footsies the majority of the match if you choose to play that way. That's just how you want to play the game, okay. to be honest. So. All right, so V-isms and that sort of stuff. So, so a little bit more creativity, probably it sounds like. More possibilities, universal, yes. me universal mechanics. Of course. All right, awesome. Um, we have done that. So let me ask you, oh, favorite player. I don't think I've asked you this. I might have, I'm not sure, uh, but Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite player at the moment or, or a favorite player of all time? Well, see, in different video, different fighting games, I have favorite players. So in Street Fighter 4, my favorite players to watch was uh, Marn, who, in, who introduced me to Dudley pretty much. Like, he was the reason why I, I... Well, first of all, before him, it was the guy named PJ S. Liquid. He was the one that made me really want to try Dudley, but then... As soon as uh, th this guy named Marn, he beat him in the Deli Mirror match. He beat the person I looked up to. So I'm like, then who is this guy, you know? Yeah. Then he really made me really start playing Deli, you know? Because I didn't really play too much of Deli uh, 
when I was watching PJ's look because I felt like Dudley was too hard to learn. But I still would watch him all day, you know. But yeah. Mar made me want to actually play him. So in that concept, those two would be my favorite. But then towards like Ultra, I liked... Uh, oh, no, before that, Arcade Edition was Punko, 100%. Then after that, it was just mostly uh, Nemo and Kazunoko, probably. Those two would be good. Then so the, all those players are very different, you know, yeah. like types of players. Yep. Well, mm-hmm. what, what was it that... Is there something, one thing that resonated throughout them that you liked, or was it... I just liked the way they approached the game. Like, I just loved Nemo's execution. Like, I loved the way he played. Yeah. Same with Kazunoko and Punko. Uh, Punko was like a swaggier offensive heavy Seth player so that's why I liked him a lot yeah you know and then um Marn same thing you know very offensive like I just like the way he approached the game very good mind games and stuff so mind games good that was the segue thank you very much yep. let's talk about mind games okay. because you are in that you're, you're in like that little set of the guys there's not so much anymore as well sorry let me rephrase that there's like you and Punk and mm-hmm. Knuckle Do, and you're always playing each other, and you're always kind of messing with each other, right? Oh yeah. Before huh? the game, during the game, after the game, whatever, right? I don't think there's as much um, sort of in-game taunts as you know. This is the taunt action. Uh, yeah. there's, there's not as much in, in-game taunt, taunts going on at the moment. Um, how do you think about mind games? Like, are you actively, you often actively think of it as like this is part of my my game in general? Well, I just have fun with people who I play against, like when it's on like stream or whatever. I just have a good time. Like for example, when I played against Gamer B, uh, I just want to try on his glasses to see how blind he really is. You know, that was it. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's true. I just want to see like, what are you seeing in these glasses? When I saw, I was like, ooh, ooh, you blind over there. Here, here you go, man. You know, but like stuff like that, I just interact with the player, you know. Yeah. There's people that troll me, okay? Like I just want to shake the person's hand before, like as a good game oh, yeah, or yeah, good yeah, luck, yeah. Yeah. you know? Then they do like a rock, paper, scissors. So I'm like, okay, like for example, I reach out my hand, then they reach it out too. Then out of nowhere, when I reach it out, well, sorry, when he reaches it out, then I reach out, then he switches to the rock. So I'm like, okay, maybe you just want to do a fist bump. So I'm like, okay. Then he says, does the scissors. So then I don't know what to do after that. I'm like, I'm done. I lost. Okay. So okay I'm done. Okay. And what yeah. about in game? Does that stuff ever get to you? Uh, yes like, and no. Yes or no. no? Oh, it does a little bit yeah. sometimes? It does a little bit. Sometimes you just got to snap out of it, you know? Yeah. That's it. Just get out of it. But majority of the time when I, when my mind games, you know, you know, you mentally uh, defeated an opponent. I was like, oh, I postulated his possibilities. Yeah. And then you, and then you like play up. Do you, if you feel like you've broken somebody, it's a harsh way of saying it, but if you feel like you've broken somebody psychologically, do you then play up the mind games a bit or? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, that's pretty much with the mind games. When you mentally break somebody, they start getting frustrated. You know, they start doing things they don't usually do. They do a lot of uh, bad, de- they make a lot of bad decisions. So yeah. that works in your favor. They start dropping combos. You're yeah. like, good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You're like, yeah, I got this. I got you. All right, so um, recently Cody, you know, long-awaited Cody mm-hmm. was uh, was released. What are your What are your thoughts on Cody? You know, I don't really play Cody, but uh, I think they did a really good job with the character design. Yeah. He's finally out of uh, prison, you know, and um, oh, that's true. Yeah. So he's a different approach character. They made him towards like Final Fight, Cody, like back in the day, like the beat 'em up game Final Fight. So that's what they try to approach him. Yeah, as. his um, what do you call it? The V skill. Yeah, the V skill. Yeah, so I thought that was a pretty cool approach. And his V trigger is really uh, scary. So I like how Momochi is the, playing the, against the the bat with the, the pole, pipe yes. ones. The yeah. pipe, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like I like the approach the way Momochi is playing playing with Cody. I like it a lot. Yeah. I think he's a cool looking character to be honest. Yeah. I might give him a try. If not, if he's not my cup of tea, all right, I'll stay with Balrog. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. See, cup of tea is so perfect for Dudley. It's just a shame he's not. Back <laughs> no in. pun it's intended. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah it? shame he's not back in the game. Uh, just, well, just, just a little off topic. I like your shoes. I'm sorry about that. Who's? It's so casual. Yours. Oh my I, goodness. Oh yeah, that's that's sort of. I, I don't know. Like. I just want to go ahead with the interview. I, think I just wanted a, to I let think, you know. I think it's an English thing. I don't know. Might be. I got no clue. Oh my. Oh. See, I actually want to go more in this direction, but it probably right. wouldn't suit me. I'm so, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. I just saw it. <laughs> that's why I was looking the whole time, guys. The whole interview. I was just looking. I'm like. I was looking at yours, and I was thinking, are those are, they, are those like the ones that you can pump like? This no, is, no, no. This, this is how fucking old I am. Like, uh, I'm looking at They have like, those, the Reebok. I know you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reebok, yeah. So. The pumps, man. Yeah. 
Back in the day, I remember when those first came out. Yeah. All right, so to be honest, I think, oh no, I got a few more interesting questions. Okay. Just a few more. All right. Um, this one's a good one because, oh, really? you know, you're, you're a thinker, you're a psychological kind of person. Okay. Do you have a quote or a mantra that you that keeps you going, that you have or inspires you? Uh, well, so say if I like, um, say if I'm in a situation where I'm in a tournament and there's a three out of five, so you got to win uh, three games. Say if the, the person's up by two games. I just think to myself, it ain't over till it's over, you know? When you think about that, it's like, all right, it still gives you confidence. So people think like, oh, I lost, man. Do you ever picture anything? Like when, you, when you're saying to yourself, it ain't over till it's over, do you ever, is there anything that inspires you? Is there something from the past or like? I think of turkey neck bones when I am in a match. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm hungry at all, at all times, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think about the gravy that is soaked in. It's really ridiculous. The way gra Grandma Smug prepares it at every Thanksgiving. I'm sorry. I didn't even know where Grandma Smart gets time to make oh food. Oh my goodness, she's... She's got to stay number one on... Uh, Iron Chef, for sure. On CFN. Mm -hmm. uh, so let me ask you this. Is there anything that you, in your life, that you uh, couldn't live without? So is there anything you're kind of addicted to? Like Turkey neck bones. Huh? Turkey neck bones. Turkey neck bones. So there yeah, I don't know how ridiculous that is. <laughs> I don't even think I've ever had a turkey neck bone. Uh, really? You never had turkey neck bones? What do you do? You chew them? a gift from the gods. Do you chew them and spit them out? Or? Say it again? Wait, what are they? They're like... It's like... It's hard to explain because it's just... It's literally a gift from the elder gods. Where would I go? Where, where should I go to get the best? supermarket, you know. Just supermarket? Firstly, nice cut turkey neck bones for prepare you. Prepare it? How do I prepare it? You say it again? How do I prepare that? Oh, you, could, you, you can prepare them like on the stove or whatever, or bake them. It's really good that way, you know? Okay. I was just wondering if there was like a turkey neck bone restaurant in like, like some No, place they're that... very, they're like a one of a kind thing. You, it's like very rare. So you got to really go out your way to find them. But supermarkets, they should have them. All right. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. I'm going to sure. try it at some stage. You will thank me later. Trust me. Next time I'll, when I see you post it, you don't have to say anything. I'll just be like, you're welcome. Just, you're welcome. <laughs> I'll tag you, man. I'll yeah. tag you. When I get when I eat turkey neck bones, I will tag you. You tag me. No captions. I'll be like, you're welcome. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. No captions. No need. No need. No need. Um, last question is this. If you weren't a pro gamer right now, what would you be doing? If I was a pro, if I was not a pro gamer, yeah, yeah. I'll probably just be in college right now, to be honest. Yeah? And you, and you still don't, you don't know what you'd be studying, right? Or you do? Oh, uh, business management, marketing. Business management? Yes. Oh, and marketing? Oh, yeah. okay. Cool, cool, cool. That's actually... I just want to wear a suit when I grow up, you know what I'm saying? I just want to wear a suit. I want to look like Yuri. I think you should wear a suit to tournaments, man. I should, right? Yeah, Men absolutely. in black. Okay. I feel like that's the next step. I'm thinking about it. I feel like that's the next step. But I got to wear your shoes with the with Yeah, the suit. yeah, exactly, exactly. And these are a little bit too casual for suits, but it's something close to this, yeah. I could help you out of that. No problem. Think, but what should be my first suit? That's the question, you know? Oh, dude. Should I wear a tux or... Yeah, I think a tux is the perfect way to go. Uh, I think a tux at Evo. If you make top eight Evo, I think you should wear a tux. You I think that would ideas. Be, I mean, I mean, Sonic Fox wears his furry suit, so. I oh mean, yeah, he does. I, I think you should. Wear I don't know it. how he breathes in that that little. I got no clue. I, I got no clue. And also, does it have like a little air conditioning in there? Well, also like the, everyone seems to borrow it as well. It's like so. a pinata. Every time I see it, I just want to. <laughs> get a little I, stick. I have no idea. Just... If I get the chance to interview him, I'm going to ask him. Mm -hmm. uh, because he lends it out a lot as well. I don't know if he, if he can even see in that thing. I think he look. I, I'm, I'm guessing he looks through the mouth, but I, I don't know. We're postulating the possibilities of wearing a furry suit, of course. which is important. We're noticing uh, the patterns. <laughs> exactly. All right. So last thing is, if you got anything that you want to say uh, to your fans to about Rise, anything you want to is, is there anything that you want to end on? I just want to say, ladies and gentlemen, I love you all. I just want to say that. This is just the beginning. You guys did not see anything yet. I'll just leave it there. Okay. Shout outs to shout outs. What about Trunks? Shout outs to Trunks too. Thank you. Of course. That's, it. That's why I was waiting for that. Of course. All right. I was going to say that. Listen, man. Right. Thank you. Uh, it's been awesome. Really a lot of fun. Really a lot of fun. Of course. And uh, good luck. You got to you got to go do top 32 now. So yes. I hope you do well. Before this interview ends, is this real? The little I don't, fire. I don't know what it is. Don't I do that. You burn yourself. It's a, yeah. Ah, it's no. a it's a TV set. I think. 
Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah. But we can pretend. We can be like, oh, it's so cold in here. Thank you know, God you for the... Your, you just put your feet up on there, you know what I mean? You just, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just, ah, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. just put your feet up on there. You I know? think they should have like a fish tank as well, so it would look like the fish are burning. It would just, it would be weird. Mm. Not like literally burning, but just like the fish in the fire. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. All right, man. I think that's a good place to leave it. Let's no say worries. goodbye to these guys. All right, man. See you later, All guys. Right.